Hi, it's Blake with Fishbait. In today's video, we are going to do a review of IIS Crypto and how we can use it to help set up protocols, key exchanges, ciphers, and hashing algorithms on our Laserfish servers. To begin, we need to get an understanding of why we would use IIS Crypto. So let's go back a little ways and let's talk about SSL sessions. An SSL session always begins with an exchange of messages called the SSL handshake. The handshake allows the server to authenticate itself to the client by using public key techniques, and then allows the client and the server to cooperate in creation of symmetric keys used for encryption, decryption, and tamper detection for the sessions that follow. Optionally, the handshake also allows the client to authenticate itself to the server. Secure channels, or S channel, is used to negotiate the security handshake between systems and, app and applications. Uh, to perform the function, S channel leverages different security protocols, ciphers, and hashing algorithms in order to um, secure and make private the communication through encryption. Each Windows operating system maintains a predefined list of combinations, referred to as a cipher suite, which are approved for communications. The list is prioritized though, with the top or first cipher suite being the most preferred. If you want to learn more about how the different cipher suites, key exchanges, ciphers, hashing algorithms all work, there's various websites out there that you can Google and read about that specifically. We're not going to go into detail about that in this video, but we will walk through IIS Crypto and show how we can use IIS Crypto to actually set those for us in the Windows registry. So first to download IIS Crypto, um, you should just be able to open up your browser and do a quick search for IIS Crypto. It'll come up with the website. And when we open our website, we can see um, a couple descriptions about what IIS Crypto does. Um, as you can see here, basically what I said previously, um, it's a free tool. It allows you to enable or disable certain protocols, ciphers, hashes, and key exchange algorithms on Windows servers. And it does it all through a GUI interface. Uh, you can scroll through here and read a little more about it. You can create different templates and things that I'll show you. Um, there's also a command line. Um, if you're more comfortable with command line to do this, you can use that as well. So to download, you simply click on the download button. And you can choose to download the GUI or the CLI. I like using the GUI. Um, you can see the different release notes if you want to read through that as well. I've already downloaded IS Crypto, so I'm just going to minimize this and we'll go ahead and open it up. So when you first open IIS Crypto, the first tab that you'll be taken to is called the S channel. And you'll see different options that are selected, um, some that are not selected. It does give you a description here. Um, if you see a checkbox that is gray, it means no setting has been specified for that and that the operating system defaults will be used instead. So again, I'm not going to explain what each one of these options are. Some of them may look familiar. You may get an understanding just by reading it. But again, if you wanna learn more details about it, there's different websites that you can go and do that. So why would we want to enable or disable different protocols or ciphers, hashes, or key exchanges? Most of it has to do with security. Um, as security has gotten better, different protocols and ciphers and things have been released with better security um, to prevent people from gaining, basically interrupting communication and gaining access to information that they shouldn't have. So, for example, if we look at TLS, you can see TLS 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1 right? 1.3 is the newest, and that has better security than the previous versions. Um, Windows or Microsoft is actually disabling 
um, TLS 1.0 and 1.1 on Windows 11 and up or newer. Um, by default, they're disabling it on their Azure servers, I believe coming at the end of April of 2024 as well, because they are just old protocols and not as secure as the other ones. So these days it's very common to disable the older protocols and ciphers and things um, and usually enable 1.2 and 1.3, depending on what your organization requires. Um, you would want to talk with your security expert at your organization of how this should be done. Um, if I go over to Cypher Suites, um, if you're familiar with Cypher Suites, it's basically a combination of all of those things on the S channel. Um, and this is what I mentioned where the Cypher Suites, it's in a priority order of what it's going to try first. So as this server communicates with another machine, it will try communicating with the top one listed here first and then go down the line. Two machines have to have the same Cypher suites enabled in order to communicate um, effectively during that TLS handshake when it's negotiated. So that's why you want to make sure all your machines have the correct Cypher suites configured so that they can communicate correctly. So on the Cypher Suites tab, if you needed to reorder these or enable or disable certain ones, you could do that here. Um, on the Advanced tab, this is something that I've never actually edited before, um, but if you wanted to change some of these advanced settings, you are able to do that. Um, I, I have heard of people needing to use the FIPS algorithms. Um, that's a requirement that um, usually federal or certain types of government organizations have and you would go through and enable that there. You can also back up your registry from here before you make any changes, which is always a good thing to do. IS Crypto does come with different templates already created. Um, you can create your own. So if you were to go into the S channel and change some of those settings, you could then save that as a template and then you could use that template on other machines so you don't have to recreate it every time. Um, I find that the templates that are already here are sufficient. Um, you can see that there's five of them listed. If we go to server defaults, after you select it, you can just go back to S channel. You'll see that my options have changed. So again, the, the defaults are gonna be grayed, meaning that it's going to change the registry keys to use the operating system's default settings. Uh, best practices. Um, this one is slowly becoming not best practice. Again, it's it has TLS 1.0 and 1.1 selected. Um, those are being disabled by lots of organizations these days. So I wouldn't really consider this template best practice. Usually I go with a PCI 4.0 or strict. And you can see it disables the older protocols and ciphers and leaves TLS 1.2 and 1.3 enabled. But you can play with those as you need to. Um, there's also a site scanner. So if you have an address that is, or a URL that is accessible externally, um, Qual, Qualys SSL Labs can actually perform a scan of your site and show you maybe some things that you may need to look at. For example, I ran it on the Fishbait website. And this is what it gives you. It will launch the website in your browser and then it will perform different scans and tell you how your website is looking. And you can go through and review that. Um, you can expand different items. It'll tell you which protocols are enabled, right? So our older protocols are disabled on the website, which is good. You can see it talks about Cypher Suites, all of that information. So that's what the site scan will do. All right, so if I want to apply the PCI 4.0 template, I'm just going to select that, come up to S channel, and then I can click on apply. Um, usually you'll have to do a reboot of the machine in order for 
the changes that take effect. Remember, you are editing registry keys when you do this. So you can select the reboot checkbox. And when you click apply after that's checked, it will actually restart the computer for you. So if you don't want it to restart right away, don't check it. Um, but if you do, go ahead and select it, click apply, it'll do all that for you. So again, this makes it really easy to go through and update those registry keys the way that you need in order to disable or enable different protocols and ciphers, etc. You will notice that there is a best practices button down here. So if you select that, it'll tell you best practices for your computer have been set. Please click the apply button to save the changes. And again, this is just using that best practices template from the templates tab. Um, so if, if you're okay with 1.0 and 1.1 being enabled, you could use that to quickly set everything. Um, again, I prefer using the PCI 4.0 in disabling those other protocols. Hopefully this has given you a good idea of how you can use IIS Crypto to set your different server protocols and ciphers and make your Laserfish servers more secure. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, keep fishing.